Welcome, everybody. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Karen Thaxton with MarketingWords.com, and I have Bradley Sutton with me again because you're just too much fun. Uh, I have to have you here full of information, and that's what we're going to do today. And you... <laughs> I'm live from Italy here. Some, uh, <laughs> or don't something. mind this person here who's, who's a very, uh, very still <laughs> with her dark glasses, but yeah, this is a Zoom thing, but we got some camera issues, so... I wish I was an <laughs> So just kind of ignore that background and focus <laughs> on, on Bradley. Don't, don't yes. worry about what's going on in the background. Um, but the reason that we're here today is because, once again, we've worked our way through the calendar and Q4 is creeping up fast. And so many years, Amazon sellers go, wow, now what am I going to do? I forgot to this, that, and the other thing. You know, I want to add new products or do I, is it too late to add them and how do I get them up to speed fast so that I can make sales and run completely out of inventory on all of my Christmas and my holiday purchases. So I couldn't think of anybody better to call in to help us with that than Bradley with Helium 10. So I'm going to let you get started. I know there's a lot to cover in a short period of time, but Walk us through your emergency plan for prepping for Q4 so that there can be maximum profits uh, for this year for our Amazon sellers. Yeah, well, uh, the, the, there's kind of like two aspects uh, of this that I think are, is important. And, and I think it's going to cover everybody who's listening to this right now. So, you know, the first thing is, you know, you got to re-optimize, you know, what you already have and maybe you've been planning. But I would say a good maybe 80% of you maybe didn't plan. Uh, you know, maybe you don't have a product that's that's going to work uh, for uh, for an hour, or you're not, you haven't looked into seasonal products before, and and you're just like trying to ramp up your current sales. Well, I've I've got some information for you too because what you can do is prepare for next year, um, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that. But but the very first thing that that that's important, like it doesn't, as we all know, you don't have to have Christmas products uh, or Thanksgiving products to be to be successful in Q4. Everything gets a bump uh, in Q4. So, well, a couple of the things I, I would do, um, I would reanalyze right around this time and, and maybe towards, towards October especially, um, everything that you did when you first created your listing, uh, run it again. So let me just do a brief overview of some of those things that are important. Um, let me share my screen here. There we go, you can see my Amazon screen. What is something like, go ahead and give me a, a scenario, um, Karen, like something that's a product, like let's make a, a sample, one of your audience here, and we're going we're gonna to help them prepare. So like what kind okay, of product is your sample? Let's do a pet bed. I'm sorry? A pet bed, like a dog bed? Pet bed. All yep. right. So um, here are some pet beds here. Now let's say, you know, you've got one of these and, and you haven't really done anything with your listing in a while, which is, you know, fine. It's not like you have to re-optimize your listing every week or anything, but once sales start picking up, I would especially want to really take a look at um, how, what new keywords have emerged because here's the thing, almost all categories, like especially in the pet, but like a lot of things, uh, Buying behavior changes, you know, the, the words that people use for change. I remember um, a, a few weeks ago, somebody told me it was about a, a kind of newer product. And last year, the main keyword was, some, was whatever that product was for beginners because it was kind of a newer product. And that was like the number one keyword by like a two to one factor as far as search volume goes. Like I think it was like 10,000 search volume. And then the, the, the number two keyword that was about that product had like maybe 5,000. But now fast forward a year later, um, you know, it's been a year since they looked at their listing. And now all of a sudden that keyword for beginners had like 2000 search volume. And uh, it was a new keyword that wasn't even on the map that what people were searching for that had like 10,000. So if that person never did anything to their listing and it was not optimized for that main keyword, like maybe that wasn't in their title or something, well, well, they're just losing money left and right. So it's important that you analyze the trends. Where this is not as important is maybe like, you know, mason jar or something. I mean, like, I can't imagine the, the word that people use for mason jar is going to change over time. But, but for a lot of you, uh, it might be. And don't assume too. Like, don't do what I just did and assume that mason jar is going to stay the same. It could very well uh, change. So 
what is the steps again? You know, we've gone over a little bit of it, but now uh, let's go over from the viewpoint of you already have an existing product. We talked about keyword research before from the viewpoint of, hey, I, I'm going to launch a new product and I need to know what keywords to put in my first listing. But let's just say that, you know, you, you've got a pet bed and, and let's see, what style, what style of pet bed are, are we going to do? Are we going to talk about these ones that look like a trampoline or one of these cushiony ones or an igloo style one or which one? Oh, let's look down here at this one that looks like, what is that, a banana down at the bottom? A leaf? This one right here? The yellow one. Go right Interesting. Down. Okay. So let's say that, what, what even is this? That's, so it's like a cat, like a cat house. Yeah, probably too small for a dog. That is pretty cute. Yeah, it is a banana. It's a banana. Wow, look at I've that. I've seen a cat that was in a banana before. Okay. I, I, I'm going to guarantee that this is going to be a hot seller in Q4. I'm, I'm just going to go out on a limb because I know people who are crazy about their cats and they would just die over something like this. So let's just say that this is your product. So the very first step is I'm going to copy the ASIN yep. and I'm going to go into uh, Cerebro here. And I'm going to paste that ASIN because that's my, uh, what I call my seed product or my product. Now what I want to look for is I'm actually going to go a little bit uh, into cat. I'm going to go cat bed house just for this because I think I'm going to get a little bit um, better results here or more targeted cat bed house. Let's take a look. And boom. Yeah, sure enough, that one comes out first. So like these oh, are- the shark. <laughs> that, oh my goodness. That would be great during Shark Week too. So uh, is this like a burrito <laughs> bed yeah. almost? That's pretty crazy yeah, too. Kind of. So yeah, let, let's, um, let's take a look here. So this is an interesting one. We've talked before about how you should probably take a look at who your direct competitors are. Very right. similar to you. Now, in this case- this is such a unique product. I doubt we would even find four banana bed houses that we can compare to. So then when, when that happens, what you're going to want to compare to is just the other ones where you think that, again, the point is that your avatar is the same avatar. So like, yeah. what are the products that have the same target demographic? In other words, if my product was put up with another product and all things were equal as far as like, price and whatever, there'd be a 50, 50 chance. Like they would go with either, you know, like if somebody was looking for a cute, uh, cat house like this, they would not buy this product. I mean, that, that's just not what they're looking for. Yeah, I mean, it's right. a different, it's a different kind of customer. Yeah. So with that in mind, let's run x-ray here and let's just see who are the good selling, um, cat bed houses here. And, and I have two cats myself and hope my kids don't see this video because I know they're going to be bugging me for, uh, <laughs> For we some of this, the banana bed. I'm, I'm, I'm going to send you the bill for that, Carrie. No, You're the no. one who picked this, so <laughs> I hold you responsible. All right, so let's take a look here. Uh, this one, maybe it's a little bit more crazy, though. It's, it, this, these are, I think the people who buy this is more of those ones who want an all in one thing where it has a scratching thing and it has, like, yeah, toys. like a cat yeah. condo kind of deal. This one, maybe. I would say maybe. Yeah. I mean, this is a similar, you know, kind of cutesy vibe. So I, I definitely want to analyze what's going on with their keywords. Um, this one for sure. I mean, this is just one oh, of those yeah. unique uh, kind of things. Uh, you know, who knows? Maybe some people want a, a shark. Some people want a banana. The, the reason why, I mean, at, at face value, this might seem like two completely different products. You know, a shark and a banana. And yeah, one customer might not buy either. But here's the thing. No, but I guarantee you, nobody is searching for, or hardly anybody is searching for shark cat bed or banana cat bed. And the reason is they don't know it exists, right? I didn't know this existed before 10 minutes ago. So I'm not going to be searching for something that I don't know exists. I'm going to use a generic term like cat bed house or something. And then, right. and then maybe, you know, whatever strikes my fancy as it were, uh, that I don't even know what that is. Okay. Sticks to a window. No. Yep. This one, uh, it's kind of, uh, I don't know. What do you think? Probably. It's yeah, not as cute. I'm going to do it. It's, 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 it's kind of interesting. So let's, let's go ahead and uh, uh, copy it. <clears throat> All right. Let's keep going here. Um, yeah, this one maybe too, the little igloo yep. style. Yep. All right. And definitely this little burrito one. <laughs> here. You like the burrito one. 
<laughs> looks like burrito or it could be some kind of like cigarette or something. I don't know. A cigarette. <laughs> right? I mean, look at that. It was like, uh. Well, if we can have cat banana beds, I guess we can have cigarette beds too. Right. I agree. Uh, maybe we'll go ahead and uh, throw this one in here too. This one's selling about $8,000 a month. So basically what I want to see is um, what keywords that they have that maybe I don't have at all or what keywords are they maybe getting sales from in the last few months that I for sure am not getting sales. Now you might be asking like, how in the world will you know that? Well, I'm going to show you how I would know that. And it's not by asking my, my friend down here. Uh, she's on her computer looking at Cerebro right now. Um, that's why she's very she's still. She's preoccupied. She's not going to help <laughs> Yeah. All right. So let's take a look. There's probably going to be thousands of keywords that are going to uh, show up here. All right. 21,000 keywords. Now, first of all, th 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 this is something that's cool too. Like, uh, I think that is overlooked on Helium 10. Look at the frequently bought together because that's the other thing we're going to talk about. Remind me if I, if I don't, if I don't, uh, bring this up again, uh, oh, but that's going to be the next step. Uh, I'm going to go back to this frequently bought together stuff to talk about, uh, how to optimize your PPC for, for Q4. But okay. here we go. We've got 21,000 keywords and that that's, that's just insane. I, I want to know the money keywords. So I'm going to say, show me the keywords that search for, let's just say at least 800 times a month. I'm putting it in right here. And um, let's just say the competitor rank average is, let's say between one and 50. I'm, I'm going to make it pretty, pretty big right here. And let's see what kind of keywords we end up with. We're going to go from 25,000 down to 48. So here we go. So now some of these, I can definitely tell that probably wouldn't be uh, relevant to me, but I know which products are, are driving the sales of this, like Cat hey. Bet Cave. But, yeah. but, but who knows? Maybe somebody knows about those igloo style ones that look like a cave yeah. and they would be swayed. Like um, my kids maybe would have known about the igloo style. But then if right. they saw that banana one, I, I, I guarantee they would have changed their mind and picked the banana one. So just because this keyword here might seem not relevant to your product, think in the mindset of, of convincing someone to buy your product just because they never knew yours existed. Okay. So all of these keywords, take a look here. Um, my product, if that banana was mine, that banana bed, it position rank 17. All right. What that's what this one is. So what does that mean? That means that, um, right now for cat bed cave, cat bed cave, I'm already on page one, but what about my competitors? If you look here, you can see the competitors. You see, I'm dead last place. Yeah. Let me highlight this right here. The, the one, uh, the one that is and my, my little fancy pen is not working here. This, this technology, I, I don't know about technology what sometimes. What's going on? You're having a rough day. My goodness. My, my pen is not working. I'm supposed to, I want it to be able to draw on the screen and all kinds of fancy things. But here I'm stuck in Italy and I can't draw on the screen. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, as you guys can see here, I'm last place. So you know what? My competitors, I guarantee, are getting more sales for this keyword than me. Yeah. So is this something that maybe now – that it's before really the thick of Q4 and before Christmas time, it's cheaper now to try and increase my page ranking on this as it will be a month or two from now. So right now, even though it's early, might be a time like, hey, let me maybe target this a little bit more in PPC. Let me do some you know, Facebook campaign. Let me do something to try and get ahead uh, on, on this keyword. Now, right. another thing you can look at is right here. Look at this. NR. What does that mean? That means that my product um, isn't even uh, isn't even ranked, or isn't even ranked in the top 306. So it could be that, and there's tons of NRs. Look at all these NRs here. This is this is great. Look at all these NRs here. So that could either mean one of two things: one, I'm not even indexed for that keyword, or two, even if I am indexed, I'm not even in the top seven pages anywhere. All right. So let, let, what I would do is I'm going to take a look at some of these. Um, 
And this is what you would need to do if this is your product. I'm gonna to go to index checker. Watch this, by the way, I'm gonna I'm gonna import my listing right here. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you guys have your listing saved because you've gone through Karen's other videos about how to use scribbles to write your listing. Yay, and hopefully scribbles. you have it saved in scribbles. But if not, watch this. I don't know how many of you guys know you can do this. On this page, I'm gonna go listing optimizer right here. There's a little widget here from Helium 10. I'm gonna hit listing optimizer. And it's going to pull in uh, that listing. Boom, right there. All right. So all of these keywords, I'm just curious. I'm going to copy all of these keywords and I'm going to paste it right in here to scribbles. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you would have to put in your own, you know, Helium 10 is not hacking into the the back end of people's listings. I can't tell what you have in your, in your search terms or your subject matter. So you'll have to put in what you have there. But right away, I'm going to be able to see what keywords potentially I don't even have in my listing. All right, and take a look here. So this is my listing. Look at that. Indoor is not anywhere on the front of my listing. That's a no brainer. Obviously this banana bed is an indoor thing. So that means any <laughs> keyword that has indoor uh, I'm not even going to show up for. I'm not even going to be indexed for. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, kitty. How in the world is this banana seller not putting kitty in their listing? That's insane. Yeah. But hey, guys, guess what? This could be you. This could be you. you maybe you forgot to put this word uh, in your listing. Uh, toys. Um, play. TP. Condo. Yeah. I mean, like cat condo. That, that's, a, that's a keyword that, that people are searching for. Uh, cuddler. So, so there's tons of keywords here that I just determined are some of these keywords that are driving sales to one or more of my competitors. And I either A, do not have a listing optimized for it, or B, I might not even have these keywords in my listing at all. So um, that would be the first step of, of what I want to do as far as getting, getting ready. Now, as far as once you decide or once you determine that these keywords are not in your listing, you know, where do you put them? How do you do that? Well, obviously you've got the, uh, the queen of listing optimization here <laughs> who can help you with that, but you got to know what you want to put in your listing before you can even start on the, on that part of it. So that's the very first step. Um, the next step, like I said, uh, something to help with PPC is going back here and looking at some of those that I really think are, um, that I really think are relevant. Like, let's take, um, for example, I mean, first of all, product targeting ads, you should definitely be doing, I would target almost all of these, all right? I would target almost all of these. Uh, but like, let's take the, the shark one, all right? What I would do is I would take this shark, uh, every time I say the word shark, I don't know about you, but all I, all it, going on in my head is baby shark, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, <laughs> now that's gonna be stuck in the, my head the rest of the day. Anyways. I w and I'm not sure if we've done a video on this. I don't think we have, but maybe we did. We've I would never put a black done any box. videos on baby sharks. Yeah, well, no, no, no videos on baby sharks. Please, please, guys. All right, you're going to click on product targeting. Yep. And here I, I'm talking to myself right here, uh, as you can yep. see with a little pop-in notice. Uh, I talk to myself frequently, either virtually or in person. All right, I'm going to put that ace in. And I'm going to see if Helium 10 has any information that we've gathered on it. And whoa, we do. All right. So here's what I would do. I would look at frequently bought together. All right. Yep. What is frequently bought together? Frequently bought together, guys, uh, for those of you who don't know, is this right here. These are products that people have bought in the same, in the same purchase transaction. All right. In the same purchase transaction as this. And a lot of times it's completely different products, all right? Um, so let's take a look. We have detected seven, all right? So some of these are, are, are all of these, except one are not beds, all right? So the, the traditional thought is, hey, I'm just gonna target with product targeting, you know, my competitors. Guess what? That's not the only strategy you should do because you have an actual history here that people who have bought a shark bed in not just generally speaking, that's the customer also bought. You know, that means maybe Monday they bought the, the, the bed and then maybe Thursday they bought diapers for their baby. You know, I mean, that doesn't right, help you anything right. uh, yeah. really. But this means that they actually bought it in the same transaction and not just one. I mean, to get on the frequently bought together, it's got to be frequent, <laughs> you know? So, right, so you, yeah. have, 
history, right? So now all of a sudden what I would do, like here's that one that we just saw right there on, on Amazon. I'm going to target this with my bed thing. And now all of a sudden, because I have a history knowing that people who buy kind of, what's the word? Trendy, not trendy, but niche or whatever, like yeah. unique, unique kind of things for their cat. They're mm -hmm. also buying this. So vice versa, somebody who's buying this, if they see my ad, I already have data that tells me that I have a higher probability to get them to buy my thing, right? Right. Um, so absolutely, I'm going to go to my competitors and I am going to, um, I'm going to um, target these guys for my targeting. Uh, the very last thing, and then I'm going to see, oh, look at, see, these people are already doing that. Look I know, at that. I was looking down here. Look at you, that. Yeah, look at, what is that? Um, what is this one on the left? A pig? What is that one? The gray one with the black. I don't, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't say. Little Pete. Maybe that's some kind of character. Maybe so. But, but yeah, these people are already doing that, so, right? And a fish. But, but here's the thing. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to go to this one. Now, this is a you know, nice little kit. Yep. But look at this. Look at this. Look who mm -hmm. is sponsoring here. None of those ones. Only one of those beds are doing this here. Yep. See, th because again, the traditional sense is only sponsor the ones or only try and target the ones that are direct competitors. So you would really stick out. You know, if you're just another pet toys, you're not going to stick out here. All of these look exactly the same to me. You know, five of these. Yeah. But if you put that banana thing right here, holy crap, <laughs> that really sticks out. Well, and how many times, you said you have cats, I have cats. How many times do you go online to Amazon and purchase four or five cat beds? You purchase one. Absolutely. You know, and then maybe yep. you need a little mat for the cat litter or toy. Yep. Or you think, oh, you know, this cute little kit would be great. I can split it up between my two cats or whatever. But I have never gone to a store and bought three or four pet beds at one time. Exactly. Yeah. Me, me neither. Uh, don't, and don't be that kind of customer who buys four things just to try and test it all out to see which one you like the best and then return the other three used and say something was wrong with it. Don't be that person. <laughs> That's just all right. Now, give me please a one that you know is like a seasonal Christmas product that, that's really going to be a, a, a top seller in December and November. Seasonal Christmas product. How about uh, those mini LED string lights? Boom. And okay. see the other thing, while when you talk about uh, hol specific holiday items, also when you're doing your keyword research, check for gift related keywords. If you don't keep them in there Absolutely. already, I mean, you could possibly have them in there for a pet bed for like cat birthday gift or something like that. But people buy holiday gifts for their dogs and their cats and their guinea pigs and their iguanas and everything else. So absolutely go in when you're in Helium 10 and do some competitor research and some keyword research on gift related key phrases that might apply to your products. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and don't forget the Spanish words too, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. don't forget the Spanish gift, regalo, you know, that's gift, uh, Navidad, Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So now um, I would venture to say that what I'm seeing here, these will not, this is not indicative of what the best sellers are going to be for, for the Christmas time because people haven't started buying stuff yet. So yeah. these are stuff that maybe is left over. So if you were to do your research now, so now I'm talking to you guys who miss the, miss the boat. All right. You, you, you didn't plan enough, which is totally fine. Don't worry about it. Um, and, and now all of a sudden, uh, two months from now, you notice that my goodness, there's some string light people who are, are selling 100 units a day. And a lot of people avoid seasonal products, but some people are like, Hey, uh, if I sell just in one month, one item and it's selling a hundred a day and then doesn't sell at all the rest of the year, but for 30 days, I'm selling a hundred a day. Shoot. Mm -hmm. That's good yeah. enough for me. Uh, you know, so, so that, if that's you, well, here's what you do. Don't do this right now. Because again, this is not indicative of what the best sellers are. I guarantee you that 50% of the best sellers that are going to be in November don't even have that. They're listing active right now. Like it's been out of stock for six months or something. Yeah. So what I want you guys to do come beginning of December, right? Do these kind of searches, you know, look for the trending Christmas keywords. And then what I want you to do is I want you to run ASIN Grabber, okay? 
run ASIN Grabber, which is a very overlooked tool in Helium 10. And that's going to give you uh, I, what you see, what you do when you run a search in November like this, you're going to see the best products at that time for Christmas. So now Christmas, December, 2020, you're going to be prepared. How so? Well, come uh, June, July, that's when you're going to start purchasing maybe for fourth quarter. Yep. And again, if in June or July, you ran this search, just like I'm running this search right now, this is not accurate as far as from Amazon side, you know, this has nothing to do with helium 10, but on Amazon side about what really are going to be the best sellers. But now you're going to have this list that you download right here. You're going to click this button and download it to Excel. And then regardless of if it's in stock or not, you're going to have all of these ASINs and you can go to these ASINs come July of next year, even though you won't be able to find it on Amazon but you'll be able to find it from your ASIN grabber. And then now you can do your research of like, okay, what were the styles that were really selling the best during uh, Christmas time? What was hot? And now you're going to have that insight that nobody else has, uh, you know, for what is going to sell well and you'll be prepared. Um, so absolutely for those of you who do not have seasonal products and it's too late now, you know, it's October, September, too late to prepare for this stuff. Do this now, or not do this now, do this in November and save it for next year. And then next summer, when you're preparing for Q4, now you have an idea, you have maybe 30 or 40 of these lists of what were some top sellers. And now you can do product research in the summer for something that nobody else can do product. If they didn't do this, they cannot research this because they don't have that historical data. But you right. went out and you used Acing Grabber to do this. And now you'll have a leg up for Q4 next year. Is ASIN Grabber in the Chrome extension? Yes, it is in the Chrome extension right okay. under X-Ray. Okay. So on any search page, you you could just, I mean, you could do X-Ray too, but just ASIN Grabber, the difference between X-Ray and ASIN Grabber, X-Ray is really detailed. ASIN Grabber just kind of like shows you in order who the top ones are, has the ASIN and who the seller was. And it goes out to like four page or like two or three pages. It, it, it pulls 125 listings. X-Ray just pulls like the first page or two. Yeah. Snapshot. Yeah. Quick snapshot. So any comments, questions about what we, uh, I think everything almost we went over today was kind of new to the yep. audience. So that's kind of I cool. I was checking some notes over here to make sure that we didn't forget to say anything. That's, that's the whole key. People go into a panic and go, what do I need to do? Well, you need to start right now and do what Bradley is telling you to do and go back through the information, make those adjustments, find the holiday related keywords, find the gift related keywords depending on what your product is there may not be any if you sell office supplies staplers and paper clips and things like that probably not almost every other product is probably going to have some sort of holiday slash gift related keywords that you can put yep. in there find what changes have been made a lot of sellers want to do that set it and forget it thing and it's been, like you said, months or a year since they took a look at what was going on in the back end. Right. Run reports, find your session conversion rates. Um, make sure that everything is selling the way it should. Now is the time to do a little bit of tweaks to be able to let the, uh, Amazon's algorithm catch back up again uh, so that you can be set to go. So whenever Q4 hits fast and furious and Black Friday kicks off, you're ready to make some money. Absolutely. Uh, Helium 10 is one of the best suites of software tools out there. Uh, I do happen to have some coupon codes that I got from Bradley and I will leave those for you below. So absolutely do not pay full price because you don't have to, even if you're doing seasonal stuff, you don't need it the rest of the year. You think helium tends too expensive for you. I got you covered. Uh, you know, you, you can get discounts on just little short term things as well. So no problem there. All right. Mr. Sutton, if people should think of questions after they watch the video, is it okay if they ask you some questions below? Absolutely. Ask me questions below. If I don't see it, Karen will make sure that I do. Yep. I'll, I'll tag you so you can go back over. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it so much. That gives people a good solid plan to cover so that they can hit fourth quarter with both feet on the ground. Thank you. We'll Have see you later. Bye-bye.